Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 38 Special Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And this episode, we're looking at the Missouri Bullet Company 158 grain high-tech coated cast. It's advertised at 158 it? grains with the high-tech coating. This one's weighing in about 157.4, so just a little bit shy of 158 grains. And, uh, you know, this bullet is, uh, it's a hard cast bullet, and... Uh, out of 38 Special, I was curious what it would do uh, more than anything, so I, I chose to go ahead and do an episode on this one. Uh, that, and I had several of them loaded up already. This is a, a bullet that I had been buying and using as a plinking round in 38 Special. Uh, the high-tech coating keeps from letting your barrel up, and of course the velocities aren't really high enough to be of great concern that you're going to start melting lead on the back of these anyway. Uh, so I still want to put these in the gel block just to see. And, uh, so <clears throat> that's what I've done here. And, you know, you may come to a situation where this is the only bullet you have left and knowing how this will function, uh, in a particular target, uh, could be helpful. So that's why we're doing this. All right, let's turn around here, take a look at the loading and then we'll get on out to the range. All right, guys. So here's a quick look at this loading and, uh, like I said, it's been a, a couple of years ago since I've loaded these up and I don't have the box for these anymore uh, from Missouri Bullet Company. Uh, Hodgson HS6 powder, CCI small pistol primers. And let's zoom in here and take a good look at this thing. So this bullet actually drops with a lube groove in it for a wax lube ring. And uh, of course, Missouri Bullet Company has forgone that in place of the high-tech coating. And this high-tech coating is really good. I've, I've run <clears throat> Missouri Bullet Company bullets for quite a while with this uh, high-tech coating or HTC sometimes they call it and I have never had any complaints with it. I've run this in 4570, 10 millimeter, 38 special and uh, and so forth, 4570 and have, have always been well satisfied with the, with the bullet offering. So uh, all right let's get out to the range. So we just wrapped up the 357 mag gel block test series. I think all in all I had something like 10 or 12 different uh, 38 caliber bullets that we tested in that series. If you haven't seen any of those, go back and check them out. And uh, we're getting ready to start a, a 38 special series. Uh, a lot of guys have been asking for this in the comments. And today I have five different bullet weights loaded up. I'm not sure I have enough gel block left to test all five of these. Uh, fortunately, one of them is uh, a cast bullet so we might get some pass through on this bullet. It's a 158 grain uh, high tech coated bullet. And uh, so we're gonna run it first. I'm not expecting a bunch of fragments and, and maybe it won't tear the gel block up as much as the, the rest of these hollow points will when we start testing those. So let's get started with this. This is the 158 grain cast with the high tech coating on it. And I do have two new clean gel block out there. One of them is still fairly clear. And I think it's only been remelted twice. And the one behind it's been remelted, I think maybe three or four times. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. can't see it on camera, but I've got a, a brass can sitting over here in the chair, and I've been trying to flip these out of the rifle and see if I can hit that can. That one missed by about a foot. And it does not look like I got a velocity on that one. So let's run another one of these into the backstop. Uh, I'm guessing that I may have had my velocity setting set too high with this being a cast bullet. And these have been loaded up for a while. These were loaded up as plinkers for a 38 Special Pistol. So they're not super hot. I might have been underneath the 1700 foot velocity mark. So let's put this one in the backstop and see if we can, can catch a velocity. Yeah, 
Yep, that's what it was. 10 inches that time. So the velocity was 12, 13.1 feet per second. So that was quite a bit slower. Um, all right, let's go see what we did with the first one. All right, so not a lot going on with this. Um, looks like we've got some spinning going on here. Got some cavitation there. Looks like it's tumbling. Got a nice big cavitation here. And here's our bullet laying at about 31 and a half inches of total penetration. And it does not look like that we got any deformation at all on this bullet, even with the rifle. So uh, I'm gonna say that from here on out with the, uh, with the pistols, we're gonna be looking at a similar situation here. All right, 158 grain cast with high-tech coating out of the Taurus six and a half inch tractor. All right. That was a shoot through. Saw the splash on the back stop. All right, we did not get a velocity with that one, so I'm going to put one of these into the back stop. Nine twenty one point four. It's this top wind track right here. It just zipped right on through. Down there somewhere. All right, 158 grain cast with uh, the high tech coating, the Ruger GP100. Again, we got a shoot through. And again, no velocity. Let's try one in the backstop for the velocity. Nine sixty six point two on the velocity. With this one running pretty high up through here on across. And again, right out the backside. Next up is the Rossi RP63 with a three inch barrel. And I was right about one thing. We're not messing our gel block up too bad. Another shoot through and again, no velocity. Eight eighty six point nine. All right, the three inch wound channel starts here, and again, it's a zip. It actually, almost exits out of the same hole as the five inch. All right, so it's taken two shots to get a velocity with all four of the previous barrel lengths. Let's see if. Uh, if we hold true to pattern or if we actually get a catch this time on the velocity. We got a catch. 836.8. All right. So that's getting quite slow. And I thought I saw a splash, but I won't swear to it. Let's go look and see. All right, guys, wound track for this one starts right here. Again, we've got no expansion, just like we saw from the previous three bullets. Uh, the difference this time is we did get a catch. 
So here is our two inch Rossi snub nose bullet sitting in here at about 24 and a half inches. And there was the rifle bullet. No major difference between either one as far as expansion goes. But we'll pull these out of here and check them. And the other three are actually six are down there in the back stop somewhere. So, all right, let's get these dug out of here and get started on the next one. All right, guys, so back from the range and uh, got these two dug out and here's our results. Uh, so we had two catches, which was the two inch and the, uh, the 20 inch lever action. And I did not mark these when I pulled them out of the gel block. But if you look really close at the rifling marks here, you can see a little bit of twist in the two inch rifling and almost no twist in the uh, 20 inch lever action rifling. Uh, that, that lever action has a one in 30 twist to it. And uh, that's not a whole lot. It's uh, less than one full twist in, in 20 inches. So <clears throat> uh, powder, the HTC coating here on the back end of this. Uh, take a good look at this here. Some of the coating is missing and the back end of this bullet uh, has a lot of the HTC missing off of it. A lot of times, if you, if you have a high enough charge in these bullets, they, will, uh, they actually will uh, obtruate into the rifling uh, as they start leaving the chamber, and the back end of that will swell up just a little bit bigger and seal all the gas in behind it, which is what you want with cast bullets. Uh, a little bit more burn here on the, uh, on the rifle bullet, of course, this was uh, this had some fire behind it a lot longer before it exited the barrel, and uh, you can see the effects of that. And uh, <clears throat> so there you go. All right, so I wasn't expecting any surprises, but I actually had a couple. So I was not expecting to get any catches at all with this bullet, uh, even out of 38 special. I was expecting these to zip right on through the gel block and keep going. Uh, so the Rossi the the two inch Rossi was getting, the, the velocity there was really low, which would explain the catch with that one. But the rifle, uh, I was kind of curious about that. And then when I went back and I, I rewatched uh, the slow motion video again, uh, you could see down in the second gel block, there was a couple of places where it looked like this bullet was actually tumbling. Uh, it tumbled, straightened up for a little bit, and then it started tumbling again, and then it straightened up a little bit farther. and. That is the only reason I can think of that this thing did not go ahead and exit the gel block like the, uh, the other revolver rounds did, uh, the three, the five, and the six and a half. So uh, anyway, guys, there you go. So uh, even out of 38 special, uh, with uh, three of these five barrel lengths, we had 32 inches of penetration and a decent little dust cloud at the backstop. So, you know, these were carrying enough energy to still knock up quite a bit of dust once they got through 32 inches of gel block. So, uh, you know, not the round you want if you're looking for expansion and a, and a big uh, a big entry wound and, and possibly a big exit wound. But if you're looking for deep penetration, even out of 38 special, this thing is gonna drive in nice and deep. So, all right guys, Matt can take your range time. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. At any point in time, feel free to scroll down there at the bottom and hit that share button uh, on the YouTube channel. Copy and paste that link on your websites or in, in a text to your friends and say, hey, check this out. And, uh, you know, that's the best way to help me grow my page. And I, I appreciate all that. And, uh, and I do get in my YouTube studio, I can see how many times my videos have been shared. And uh, so I, I, I can tell when you guys are, are helping me out there. So once again, I do appreciate that. And uh, as always, uh, back from Kentucky Range Time, and we'll catch you on the next one.